the first thing I'd like to do is kind of discuss the guitar I'm using. This is a Fender Stratocaster. Uh, there might be a more suitable guitar for this style, but this works for me pretty well. And uh, I like the clarity, the sound of the maple neck. And uh, I use 11 gauge strings. Um, starting out, I would probably recommend that you use a lighter gauge <clears throat> just for the physical aspects of it. And uh, I think first what we'd want to do is work on some arpeggios, some scales, and some things of that nature to build coordination and start to move towards the independence of both hands, where both hands are going to do different, or each hand's going to have a separate role. And uh, I think a good place to start would uh, be to get in tune. So I'm going to give you my low E, my six string. The fifth string, the A. Now the fourth string, the D. Now the third string, the G. Now, the second string, the B. And then finally, the first string, the high E. So the first thing we're going to cover is chromatic scales. Much like you would practice developing technique with the left hand working on chromatic scales I found it's very useful and helpful to develop the right hand with the same kind of premise so we'll start there and then we'll move in to working on some chord shapes some chords that you already know and I'll show you ways to tap those out and to arpeggiate them and also some different scales Okay, well, one note was a little off there, but anyway, the idea behind this is, is basically just building up strength in your right hand. And uh, working with chromatic exercises, as you probably know, using the left hand, if you take a look here with the left, you start at the fifth position. Most of you are probably familiar with this. So I think it's a good idea to also, you know, practice with this hand to work on getting that kind of coordination and uh, work on getting each finger as articulate as you can. Now the way I approach this, I, you basically you could start anywhere. You know, the benefit of the exercise is just that, going through the scale. There's a coordination thing. Uh, this works good as a warm-up and a good place to start. Um, from there, you might take scales that you're already familiar with. Uh, we're going to go with the key of C as a good place. It's a good center of the universe key to work with. And uh, maybe play some scales, some pentatonic scales, with our right hand. And uh, I think a good place to start would be at the fifth fret. And we're starting, which would be A minor, the, the fifth position, the relative, to, uh, relative minor to C. And, you know, basically what you want to do is just kind of get this hand to learn what this hand knows. And so when you get to getting the separation between the two, and this hand perhaps will play rhythm, this hand will play notes of a scale or a chord. And basically what you're doing is you're developing the freedom to be able to play these separate parts and the way to get to that is and we'll we'll start just here at the fifth fret is to play a scale
to you know A minor or the relative minor to C major. I'm thinking in the key of C because eventually that's what we're going to play a C chord against some of these scale patterns. So let's just start there. I'll play that again. So, you know, if we moved up to the next position with the right hand, a C major scale. You know, and there's so many different types of scales. I mean, you could play a dominant scale, and we'll, we'll get into talking about that different stuff, the different uh, scale choices later. Um, let's see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I played them two positions of that scale. I'm going to move it up and go th up to here, covering five positions of the scale, and then we'll talk about it. I threw that note in there. I, I kind of got off the major scale a little bit, but I think you get the idea. And then, basically, the concept I'm trying to convey here when working on this is, you know, uh, take scales that you're familiar with uh, and maybe keys that you're familiar with, and just very slowly take and uh, work on tapping. Now I should point out something before we go too much further and that'd be that is, you might see I'm resting my thumb here much like if you have your thumb playing with the the left hand in the back of the neck. It's very helpful or very necessary to have this thumb as a guide as you move up the neck and play through a scale. Now uh, <clears throat> see how my thumb is resting right there and uh, that serves as a guide like I said much like the uh, left hand so um, so basically we went through most of the C major scale now you should obviously take it a lot slower than that and uh, let's take and just work on the fifth position of that scale and here starting on the eighth fret and I'll play it slow for you and see if we can play it together. And go back the other way. I'd like to just mention something quickly about dynamics. You notice I was playing that with a little bit more of a staccato feel, you know, where the notes are shorter in duration. Well, what if I play it with a little more legato feel? And you should experiment with these, these extremes. There's uh, quite a range of dynamics that can really be produced with the style. So now I'll play the scale here, starting on the fifth fret, and I'll do it with more of a legato feel. more of a staccato feel. <laughs> <laughs> 